Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Mobile Viewpoint webinar, sorry. Whereas today, we'll be talking about our encoder products. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, my name is Mark Andrews. I'm Global Sales Manager here at Mobile Viewpoint. Uh, Matain in the studio, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm live here from the studio. Uh, my name is Martin, uh, and also working at the sales department, same as Mark. Yeah, and can you believe today is the 1st of September? Um, summer sort of officially over. Um, but what a strange year. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm supposed to be uh, in the studio with my time this morning, but um, the year that it is, I'm, I'm now in isolation due to one of my children having a fever over the weekend, so I can't join this morning, so hence I'm here remotely. Um, just a bit of housekeeping as well. Um, as we go through, the plan is, is it'll be sort of a 10 minute presentation from myself, just a quick overview of our encoder products. Uh, and then my time will then sort of do more of a sort of a hands-on showing the, the, the technology. Uh, but uh, there is a Q&A session as well at the end. So if you've got any questions or, or any comments, please feel free to write them down in the Q&A box or the chat box. And at the end of the uh, webinar, we'll, we will then go through them. So as the questions come up, just, just write them down. So I will start first of all by sharing my screen. <coughs> Hopefully everyone can see my screen. So just, just by way of introduction, um, hopefully many of you are, are already aware of Mobile Viewpoint. Uh, we're a Dutch company. We're positioned about 20, 25 kilometers north uh, of Amsterdam. Um, and unfortunately, many of you were going to come to IBC this year. You probably know Amsterdam quite well. Uh, we can't meet up. So this month, we'll be doing some sort of virtual events as well. Um, so, you know, please keep an eye on our website. Next week, we'll have another webinar as well. But Mobile Viewpoint, who are we? Well, since 2008, we've really been global innovators in mobile encoders, particularly for outside broadcast uh, and more recently sort of remote production needs. So real innovators in H.264 and more recently H.265 encoding. Um, as a company, we're the first to market with a, a 4K supporting a 4K camera, uh, as well as a multi-camera. So what is multi-camera? So basically a single encoder it, uh, could support more than one camera. Uh, and in fact, we can support up to four. And now obviously we've heard a lot about 5G as well. And of course we'll be supporting 5G as part of our sort of network connectivity. Um, the other thing innovation wise is something called Remy. So this is sort of remote production. So you may have heard, that, especially with sports production, there's been a recent migration from sending people to site and doing everything on site, whether it's the graphics, the commentary, the replays. Now it's more of a sort of a back, um, more of a sort of a remote attitude, and it's, and it's really been accelerated by COVID. So again, some of our encoders starting to support more on what we call tally, which is the tally lights and RCP connectivity. Uh, and I've, I've got a slide on RCP if you're a little bit unsure on what that is as well. Uh, but also full channel intercom, so return audio as well as return video. Now, in terms of positioning, we internally we talk about something called triple C. Uh, you may be wondering what this is. We, we know this is a very uh, competitive market, but one of the great things about mobile viewpoint is that we're always innovating and we're always adding new features. And one of which is, is, is actually triple C. So what is triple C? So this is triple connectivity. So what we allow is if you want to send a, a traditional encoding stream, we can do that. But at the same time, many people will also want to have a, a, an IP connection as well. And we're aware some of our competitors do this, but often it's one or the other. You can't do this at the same time. So if you wanted to have uh, remote connectivity, remote control cameras, that sort of thing, you can do that because you've got this sort of remote IP connection as well. But a third thing as well, which we can support, and this is all dependent on having enough bandwidth to do this if you wish to do it all simultaneously, is file upload at the same time. So a lot of people are looking at uh, uh, store and forward, that sort of thing, and they want to upload files, then again, you can do that as well. Um, and anything that you'd expect of a good modern day uh, remote mobile encoder, sort of video return, error correction, encryption. Again, we have a bucket load of features, and again, it's all fully supported within the encoder that we have. Also as a company in the last 18 months, and, and I'm not gonna to focus today on this, but just gonna mention it briefly, is that we also 
been creating some new solutions around artificial intelligence. So we have studio automation um, and also something called IQSP, which stands for IQ Sports Production. Um, and what they both have in common is the ability to create productions either in a studio or remotely on a sports field without the need for camera people. So there's a camera there and actually the AI is following and doing all the action mm -hmm. and actually it's, it's like a virtual director as well. So it's making compelling programming. However, the point of today is to talk more about our encoder business. So that's where I'm going to start. So here's a little diagram. It's showing the camera on the left. We're live streaming. Traditionally, it was over multiple 4G bonded together as a single connection. We're also supporting uh, satellite and Wi-Fi connectivity if, if you have it. And we can do that simultaneously. But obviously, the big advent of 5G now as well. So a lot of people talking about 5G and the things that, that can enable in terms of reliability, low latency, but being able to support multi-cameras as well, and, you know, with, with, with a lot less SIM cards, for example, as well. At the receiving end, typically we have a decoder. Um, we call this as a playout or a receiver server. And there at the, at the, at the destination, maybe you want to, an, an HDSDI output, or as the world moves more and more into IP, we can also create an RTMP, an RTSP, NDI, SRT streams as well. So we're supporting many different types of media workflows. And overlooking all of this is, our, is Link Matrix. So Link Matrix is our management platform. It's a portal. It just runs on a standard browser. So you can, you know, if you're at home on a Saturday night and you get the call, you can then obviously just log in through your normal sort of browser interface. But what Link Matrix is doing is basically managing everything from the encoder to the decoder and everything in between. So you can create proxies, you can see what's, what's happening, but you can also sort of, if you need to do diagnostics, you can drill down, look at network layers, that sort of thing as well. Um, and actually next week, we will have a webinar, particularly on Link Matrix as well. So if you'd like to understand more about the capabilities of Link Matrix and get a little bit deep and dirty, then please join the webinar next week as well. But what it also offers as well, if you don't want the play out, but you actually want to decode in the cloud, if you want to just do uh, web streaming, maybe live streaming to Facebook or YouTube, then you can negate the need for the play out server. So you can get, do that away and everything we can decode in the cloud and just send an IP stream to wherever you need to send that to. So I mentioned RCP earlier and the fact that the whole industry, especially the sports, is remove, uh, moving, migrating. Mm -hmm remote production. And again, this is something at Mobile Viewpoint we've taken uh, very seriously. We've had a lot of feedback and the ability to have RCP control over remote cameras is becoming more and more of a requirement for, for remote production. So it, not just the tally lights, but the fact you can basically control the whole camera from iris control. You see on the left hand side, there's a whole list of features that we can do. So it's just being able to control the camera to a standard camera controller uh, just, just remotely from a remote place. So that's something that we can allow with our, with our flagship uh, mobile encoders. Something else in Link Matrix which may be interesting, maybe you're already using some of our competitive uh, encoders, but you're interested in using mobile viewpoint as well. We're not saying you have to throw away all that. That's an investment, you have it in place. But what we can do with Link Matrix, we have this concept called Universal Playout. And this is basically allowing you to use existing encoders, but with our decoders. So we can accept different streams from your existing encoders, and then we can just create a playout stream, whether it's an HDSDI or RTMP, but using our existing decoding technology. So it just allows you to keep your investment that you already have in existing encoders, uh, whatever they may be, that you can carry on using those, but now we have this ability that you can support them with our decoders. So I'm just going to touch a little bit on, on, the, uh, in, on the encoder family, just so you're aware. And then I'm going to hand over to Martin. So Martin is going to go in a little bit more detail about these particular products as well. But I thought it might be useful for me just to give a very, very quick run through of, of the products that we're going to talk about. So Mobile Viewpoint, we have the Agile Air Link. So the Air Link is our flagship product. It's, for me, it's the most sophisticated and feature-rich mobile encoder available on the market today. Um, you can come in a backpack, you can have it loose however you like. Um, it's supporting multi-camera, eight modems, 4G, uh, sorry, 5G as well as 4K. Uh, and all the Remy functionality I've already spoken about is, is there 
in the air link already. We also then have the, the base link, which is sort of a, a mid-range mobile encoder as well. So potentially if you're thinking, okay, I just want to live stream, I want to keep it simple, then perhaps the base link is more appropriate. And obviously budget-wise, it's, it's less in price than the air link. Uh, and then we have the, the rack encoders as well. At the very low end, we have something called the TerraLink Mini. It's a very low cost, but an H.265 feature-rich uh, encoder. It's very small, it's very mobile, my time will show that as well. But actually, for those on a budget, it, it works very, very well. Um, and you have the option of that either with or without modems. So without modems, if you've got a fixed line in the wall, you just connect it to a standard encoder. If you want with modems as well, we have that uh, option as well. And then we have the TerraLink range, which is a, a range of uh, fixed encoders, they're 19 inch rack mount encoders. Again, relatively mobile and portable. Uh, and actually the TerraLink there, though I've only got the one box, it does come in many sort of uh, flavors, depending on the type of things you're looking to do. So we always encourage if you're interested in, in if you have a particular workflow in mind or a particular application, then come, please talk to us and we can recommend the most appropriate technology for you. A couple of other products as well, the data link. If you're not doing video, but actually only IP, maybe IP cameras, then actually the data link is a way of bonding together multiple modems to give you a true fat pipe. So there are other uh, devices out there which support multiple SIM cards. But normally you can only go as fast as a single SIM card. So what this is doing is actually bonding together multiple SIM cards. So you've got a genuine fat pipe, which in the video world is obviously important. Um, you can't break that up and put it down separate uh, SIM cards. You genuinely need the bigger, bigger fat pipe. So again, we generally do that. We bond it together, giving that capability. And then there's Trolley Live. Again, Matain has this to show. Um, this is something we've sort of uh, developed over the last few months, particularly driven by COVID, where actually it's, it's, it's almost like a studio in a box. It has the camera, which you can control remotely. It has a screen, which you can use to return video or auto cue. Um, everything sort of can, can be done remotely. And this is, this is the ideal, and it has modems inbuilt as well. So quite often you might ship this out to somebody's site or somebody's house, maybe talent, this sort of thing. Um, and we've had stories where actually it's gone to site, they plugged in the broadband, but surprisingly, even though these people are quite, well, supposedly sort of well off famous, they have, they don't have quite enough broadband to do the uh, necessary encoding needed for video. So again, we can supplement that with mobile, uh, with the mobile, the cellular network, and basically bond it together as a single connection. But the ideal thing about this is that you ship it to site, all the talent needs to do is turn it on, and then everything can be done remotely. So they don't need any technical capability whatsoever. You ship it to site and you're done. On that note, I'm gonna hand over to Martijn, but I did just wanna mention before I go is, uh, obviously I mentioned IBC at the start, but it's not happening. Um, there's the virtual IBC next week. And again, we're part of that. And we'll actually be showing live streaming over 5G as part of a demonstration. In fact, we're mixing some of our AI technology with our encoder technology with 5G, and we'll be doing a live demo. But then after IBC, we're also gonna hold our own post IBC event. So if it's of interest, you wanna have a one-to-one -one conversation with us, come talk to us, we talk about workflows, we talk about um, productions, whatever you're trying to do or achieve, we'd be more than happy to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. If you go to our website um, or contact us directly, then you can basically um, if you want to make an appointment, you can just email me, myself, Mark Andrews, or any of the salespeople at Mobile Viewpoint. And that's our general uh, email address, sales at mobileviewpoint.com. That will come to all of us. So if you want to take part in our host IBC event, then uh, we, you know, we'd uh, welcome the opportunity to chat with you. And on that note, I am going to stop uh, and hand over to my time. Yes, thank you, Mark. Illustrations. Um, so you can see our range of products over here. Um, today we basically focus only on the mobile encoders and not so much on the rack encoders. Uh, Mark already briefly showed you the TerraLink, which is our rack uh, range of products. So basically everything we have in a, in a mobile unit, we can also make it in a rack. 
Uh, but let's move forward now with the mobile units. This is the trolley life. It's basically an all-in-one box um, to send out to your um, to your customer, to your CEO, to anywhere. Um, it contains a camera, a big touchscreen, an audio device, and an, a mobile encoder, including four modems. Um, the good thing about the unit is that it's um, put in a ruggedized casing, so you can easily send it around, travel around with it. If it arrives at the customer, you open it up, you turn it on, you can point the camera with um, with a remote control in the right position, but you can also do this remotely. Uh, and thanks to the SIM cards and the LAN connection, you can easily stream out to uh, to anywhere. And the Trolley Live can connect to the to the same um, receivers um, as all of the the other products. So if you already have a decoder in house, you can easily send this unit around and immediately stream to your receiver or Facebook or YouTube, of course. Uh, the next unit in line is the Azure Airlink. I'm going to switch my camera position right now. The Azure Airlink. Um, when we started with the Azure Airlink, we only had an HD version, which was available with one or two SDI video inputs. Um, by now we have three different versions. Um, this is actually the 4K version with a 12G SDI input and an SDI loop through. Uh, we have the same unit in an HD version with two SDI inputs. And we also have a version um, with four SDI inputs, three times 4G or one time 12G SDI. So that unit can also transmit 4K. Um, the rest of the units um, are the same. There's a very big touchscreen to manage and control the system. A uh, battery plate on the front and on the back. It can be V-mount or Anton Bauer, of course. By default, we deliver them with V-mount, and on request, we can do it with Anton Bauer. It has a four-pin XLR connector to connect the battery plate to it, or a main supply, which we deliver always with it if you buy the backpack. It has a mic input, which can be used for the intercom, and IFB, so that's only one way, and the intercom is two-way, so you can really talk back as the cameraman back to the studio. There's an HDMI out connector, which can be used for video return. So if you have a video return encoder in the studio, you can actually transmit a high quality video signal back to the unit and see it on the HDMI output here. It has two USB ports, which can be used to transfer files. So you can put in a USB stick, for example, and upload the files via the touchscreen back to your link matrix or immediately to your um, FTP server. There's two Ethernet ports, which can be used for LAN um, and for management, um, but you can also use it for, uh, for Beacon, for example. And on the other side, we see two HDMI ports, um, which are not available in the 4K unit, which is this one. Um, but if you have the HD version with two SDI HD inputs, you also have two HDMI inputs over here. We can deliver the unit with a nice backpack. And the backpack again has the V-mount plate in it, but can also be Anton Bauer. There are several pockets in the, in the backpack, so if you want to use an external dome antenna or extra SDI cables, or take some extra cables with you, you can put them all in the backpack. And under here, we have a, a rain cover, so very useful once you use it outside. Then we have the base link unit. It's a more basic device. So basically made for live streaming and optional we can provide it with extra features. Um, but by default, it's just made for live streaming. And again, it's got a V-mount plate on the front and on the back. And you can put it in the same backpack as the Azure Airlink. Uh, and on request, we can also provide it with Anton Bauer plates. On the side, we have HDMI for video return. Ethernet and two USB ports. Um, by default, it only has an, H an SDI uh, input, HD, SD. Um, and on request, we can provide it with an HDMI input. We see more and more use cases these days with, uh, with drones. Um, so people want to connect their drone to a small mobile encoder. The drones remote control always have HDMI or most of the time. Um, so in that case, we can provide it with HDMI. 
It's got a 12 volt DC power input. Um, you can also connect it to a battery play there and a mic input for the intercom. And on the other side, you see a small touch screen for management and control of the system, which can also be done remotely by the link matrix, the on and off button, and the input for IFB. Here we have the smallest unit in our range, which is the TerraLink Mini. So it's a small mobile encoder, which is available without modems or with two modems. This is actually the version without the modems. So you can also only connect it to LAN and Wi-Fi. And if you have the two extra modems, you obviously have the four bonded connections. It's only available with SDI input, and it's got uh, the extra connectors, of course, for the USB sticks to transfer the files. And here we have the data link. It's the same size as the base link. Uh, it only doesn't have the, the video encoder and the SDI input. So you can only use this to create a video of an, an uh, internet connection. Uh, it can be very useful on sites if you don't know, if you have an internet connection, you can take this with you. There's four modems built in. You can also connect it to LAN and Wi-Fi if you want. Um, and then bond to different signals to create a stable internet connection on location. That was a quick overview of all the units. If there are any questions, feel free to ask them in the Q&A sector of the Zoom session. Okay, great, Martijn, thank you so much for that. Yes, yeah, so if there's any questions, feel free to uh, write them in the Q&A box. Um, one, one question I did get, Martijn, perhaps you could answer, is that on our website, we refer to something as a two-way link. Uh, perhaps it's worth yep. mentioning what two-way link is. Yes, um, if you have one of our deco of our, one of our encoders, the system is also able to receive a video feed. Um, so if you have, a, let's say, a TerraLink 4C somewhere in the field with modems, um, and you only use two channels to transmit back to your studio, you're also able to receive two signals again on the other two SDI connectors. Um, so in that case, you can have a high quality video return signal, if you have a good internet connection, of course, uh, that can be received in the field somewhere. So in yeah. that case, the unit is able to transmit and receive at the same time. Yeah, often it's used for encoder to encoder uh, live streaming. M many people use video return, but it, it's, it's 720p, but if you want to do full high definition, 1080i or 1080p, um, and you want, want to mix that locally, then obviously two-way link allows that as well. Um, another question, Martijn. Um, you mentioned uh, IFB and intercom as well, full intercom. Um, so what, what's the difference between the two? Um, IFB, that's uh, yeah, something we already have for a long time. And IFB, that's uh, basically only the signal, the, the audio signal, separate from the, from the video signal, uh, from the studio back to the cameraman. So that's basically to tell the, the cameraman what he needs to do. Um, but obviously the cameraman also wants to talk back to the studio to explain what's happening. And, and that can be done with intercom. So it's quite a, a new feature. I think we have it for about a year right now. Uh, and that enables the cameraman and the studio to have a real conversation uh, between each other. So there's no need for a separate phone call or a separate device to, uh, to have communication between the studio and the cameraman. Okay. Um, question on Terralink. Uh, Terralink has HDMI inputs also. How will it transfer video over social media? Um, that's basically the same uh, for all of our units. Um, so we have the encoder in the field and the decoder somewhere in the studio, which is the receiver. Um, we first transmit from encoder to decoder. And once it arrives at the decoder, you are able to create an output to social media uh, in link matrix. Uh, and that can be multiple outputs at the same time. Uh, can be Facebook, can be YouTube, can be an RTMP stream to CDN for a website, for example. Uh, it can be multiple channels at the same time. So you can do SDI output, but also multiple Facebook channels at the same time. And that's all created in, in Link Matrix. Okay. Um, and the other part of that question was, does, does TerraLink have HDMI inputs as well, or is that just SDI inputs? That's basically SDI, uh, yeah. But um, 
but we also can make available uh, HDMI or SDI to HDMI converters if people want them. It's a little external yeah. dongle. Yeah. yeah. And on request for a specific customer, we have made the Terralink Mini ones with an HDMI input. So that's, I mean, that's yeah. possible. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things, one of the strengths of mobile viewpoint is actually if you have customized needs, then, you know, please do talk to us. You know, it, it may be possible. We do all our sales, development, marketing and manufacturing um, in Alkmaar, which is just north of uh, Amsterdam. So, again, if there's particular things you'd like to see, we you know, always welcome, welcome the conversation because it, it could well be possible. Um, quick question from Kevin. Two to four inputs how clean is the switch i, I guess on the, he's talking about the multicam um yeah how clean is yeah, the we, switch yeah yeah we basically don't switch between the different signals so if you have a two four two input unit or four input unit um we transmit all the signals back to the receiver um so you have four if you transmit four signals you we don't switch on site for example um we, we send those four signals back to the studio to the receiver um, and that's the location where you switch it. So we just sent four signals in sync back to the studio. Yeah, and, and, and the sync is important there as well, of course. Yeah. Um, question, uh, Terralink can transfer multi-platform same time like YouTube and Facebook? Yes, Same-time. correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter which encoder you have of mobile viewpoint, it can be the Terralink, it can also be a mobile encoder. Um, and you stream, for example, one stream back to the link matrix, back to the studio, to the decoder. And in link matrix, you can create multiple outputs to Facebook or YouTube. So if you're doing, for example, um, you transmit for the BBC, BBC has multiple regional locations and channels, and they transmit one signal to the main channel of BBC. Uh, and, but also because it's in a specific region, they transmit to the different regional channels. That can all be done with the same stream. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, in case of multiple video input on the air link, how much will be delayed between switching and streaming? I guess that's yeah. almost a repeat. Yeah. Part, yeah, it's partly answered already. Um, if you do, for example, the two or the four video streams at the same time via the air link, um, yeah, there's no delay between switching because we, we send the four signals or the two signals at the same time in sync to the receiver. Um, you obviously do have a delay of, in, in the stream and uh, that's caused by the, by the encoding and by the mobile networks. And the lowest delay we can do is 0.8 seconds. And yeah, you can change it um, by yourself up to 60 seconds, for example. Yeah. Um, and actually that sort of concludes all the questions that we have at the moment. Um, there's nothing in the chat either. So I see it. I see another question about 5G, Mark. Maybe it's good to, uh, okay. to tell a little bit, yep. a short story about 5G. Um, you've seen a lot of um, publications already also from our company about 5G. Um, the modems are basically available, um, commercially available, so we can build them in, in our units. Um, what we understood via the, the supplier of the modems is that they are not um, already certified for all the different regions and networks all over the world. Um, and that's what, what's happening right now. And we expect by November that, um, that they are certified for all the regions and they can basically work everywhere. Um, and yet we cannot do anything about it. We just have to wait until that's, uh, that's been done by the, by the modem providers together with the, with the networks. Yeah, that, that is true. But what we're also offering is if you wanna buy products now with the 4G modems, and then later on, we can switch those over to 5G modems. And actually, you can do that yourself. You don't necessarily have to return it to the factory in order to enable that as well. We do have the, one of our products, the Ultra 5G uh, Airlink, which is relying on 5G. In fact, it's a mixture of 4G and 5G modems together in a single unit, so we can sort of bond them all together. Um, but again, as Matain says, we, you expect to start shipping on that in November. But uh, in the meantime, no, we- yeah. We can already ship them sooner, um, but before they work on all the different networks in the world, that will be November. Yeah. I believe the last network will be Verizon. Um, but the good thing is that all the 5G modems will also work on, on 4G. There we go, excellent. Um, another question. Is it planned to refresh the user interface on Agile Airlinks? 
guess that's uh, I'm, I'm not sure which interface you currently have because we recently did a user interface update. So maybe you can send us an email to the sales um, department together with your serial number. And then we can have a look at what kind of a version you have because we d recently did an update. And I see a next question about audio channels on the main screen for the same interface. That should be on it. So if you can send us your serial number, you can also do it here in the chat. Um, then we can have a look at it if you already have the latest version. Yep. That's good. Um, another thing I would suggest is obviously next week we've got the Link Matrix demo as well. And um, as part of Link Matrix, you can actually log into the encoder and, and show that uh, display as well, which will show the new display that we have. Okay. Um, and I think on that note, we don't seem to have any more questions. But I know, any final thoughts? Oh, I think uh, we have discussed everything. Uh, if you have any other questions, of course, you can always send us an email and uh, we are happy to answer your questions. Sure, and, and in fact, in the next week or so, we're, we're releasing a, a brand new data sheet on our link as well. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. And if you want to have a copy, then just let us know. Um, so on that note, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Um, if you've got any questions, any follow-up feedback, then please use our email, sales at mobileviewpoint.com, and just let us know. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you at the webinar next week. And then after that, hopefully, we'll see you at the post-IBC event that we're hosting. So if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, please join us for that. Uh, and there are more, more details on the website on how to make an appointment for that as well. But in any case, on that note, I'd like to wish everybody well, uh, safe travels, and we'll speak again soon. Many thanks for joining.